I hope you have a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. I've spoken for years about the science of fasting. I've spoken for years about the benefits of fasting, how fasting can suit some people and how some people cannot take the fasting. Today we're going to understand, today and over the next couple of days, we're going to revive, we're going to revive this physician, this doctor that exists in all of us, everyone, a child, a human adult, a teenager, an elderly citizen, someone who may be sick right now, someone who may be terminally ill right now. There is a doctor and physician in all of us, and that is called fasting. Now, when I talk to you about fasting today, okay, I want you to unlearn a couple of things. I want you to pull yourself out of the 16-8 intermittent fast box. I want you to pull yourself away from all the social media nonsense where they've made fasting into a fad where they've made fasting into a weight loss tool, into a fat burn tool, no. If you want short-term superficial results, you can go that side. If you wanna see how you can enable this doctor, this physician called fasting within you, not just to lose weight, to feel better, to put your diabetes in remission, to put your thyroid in remission. Okay, I'm not gonna say put your cancer in remission because cancer is a multifactorial disease. Yes, fasting plays a therapeutic role when done the right way, and at the right time. Number one, what is the definition of medicine? When we talk about medicine today, everyone immediately thinks allopathic. But no, today, for the first time, I'm asking you to Google something. I'm asking you to Google the definition of medicine so that you can expand your horizon of thinking and understand that yes, allopathic... Sorry, we had a lag in network. So uh, coming back to fasting. Okay, when I talk to you about fasting today as a medicine, Fasting as an inner doctor, fasting as an inner physician, fasting as an inner healer. Please don't get me wrong. I am not asking you to replace your doctors, your medical advice, your allopathy, your chemotherapy, your radiation with fasting. It cannot work that way. Yes, fasting has a therapeutic role. So does allopathy, so does chemo radiation. When done the right way, taken the right way, and administered the right way. Today, we're going to talk about fasting as a therapeutic tool. Sometimes we need to step back. You know, when we're constantly absorbing information from social media, we're constantly reading, our minds become more and more full of everything that we read. Good knowledge, wisdom, people's opinions, people's uh, experiences, that fills our mind. And that robs us of the ability to step back and actually reflect on what may really work for us. We need to understand that from the time we were born and go back decades and decades of years, the one thing that hasn't changed is evolution and genetics. Our genetics in the human body stay the same. Yes, they're changing today because of our lifestyle, environment, pollution, pesticides, new drugs, new medications, new kinds of antibiotic abuse and all of that stuff. But remember one thing about the human body. Your body is designed to feast and your body is also designed to fast. What's changed healthcare today is we only feast all the time. We constantly eat. We're all eating all the time, most of us. There's a snacking industry that tells us to eat between meals. There's breakfast that tells us that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. There's signs telling you that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And then you find out that, si that science is paid for by the cereal companies. How long are we gonna be confused? That journey of confusion can stop today. When you step back and you start reflecting, what suits me? Am I hungry in the morning? Am I really hungry in the morning? If yes, eat your breakfast. If no, why are you eating when the body isn't hungry? It's the same concept with all of your other meals. But of course, to be fair and practical, because people have to go to work Children have to go to school. We have jobs and all of that stuff. You may want to plan your meal timings. So even then, you can do it the right way. So if you feel 1, 1 30 is your right lunch time, then stick to 1, 1 30 every day. If you feel dinner time for you is good at 6.30 or 7.30 or whatever it is, fix it and keep it the same so that your body starts developing new rhythms of when to expect feed, food, which is your fed state, your feeding state. And when you are in a fasted state, that's when all the magic happens in the human body, that inner healer, that inner doctor, that inner physician 
starts to get active. It starts to work for you. Today, we're going to talk, break up fasting. I can, I can talk on fasting for days and days because there's so much of science, there's so much of experience, and there are so many, of, so many life testimonials with thousands and thousands of people with thousands of different kinds of diseases over the years. But we're going to simplify it today. Today is only reflection, okay? Number one, okay? You have a little digestive system. Your body produces acid to break down your food. It produces digestive enzymes in the pancreas. You have a limit of that. If you're constantly eating all the time, you're depleting these acids, you're depleting these enzymes, which makes the next meal harder to digest. It makes it harder for your body to extract vitamins and minerals from the food that you're eating. That's when you tend to have indigestion or undigested food reaching your small intestines, feeding the wrong bacteria, bloating, back, uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth problems, and then constipation and everything else. More than that, we have a bigger problem on our hand. Type 2 diabetes and type 3 diabetes. What is type 3 diabetes? Alzheimer's. Yes, Alzheimer's today is also called type 3 diabetes. While we can take all the insulin in the world, okay, and I'm talking about type 2 diabetes. I'm not talking about type 1. Type 1 is an autoimmune condition. You need insulin, period. I'm talking about type 2 diabetes, which is purely, purely lifestyle related. In some cases, brought on because of the steroids that you have to take that could have saved your life. But you take more diabetic drugs, you take more insulin, okay? You get a better HbA1c report, your blood sugar levels are come in control. But that's not saving you from heart problems, cardiac problems, kidney problems, or type 2 dry diabetes, which is Alzheimer's, because you still have a problem of excess insulin being put into your body. We need to understand that the main trigger, and let me tell you something right up now, not to demotivate you, but to end your frustration. If you're type 2 diabetic and you're on insulin and you're struggling with weight loss, let me tell you right now, you cannot lose weight. You cannot lose weight if you are on insulin for type 2 diabetic patients because insulin is the hormone or the key that controls the signals that tells your body to burn fat or to store fat. So when you have more insulin being pumped into your system or you're producing more insulin because you're constantly eating a high carbohydrate diet, okay, the signal that insulin gives your fat cells is store more fat. You can punish your body with exercise, you can go on crash diets and make it worse, but you cannot get your fat cells to release fat unless insulin levels drop. When insulin drops, it gives a signal to your fat cells to release fat. That's the only time you can start burning fat. So forget about all your fat burners, forget about your, all your high interval training programs, your restrictive diets and all that you do. You are going against biochemistry. You are going against the physiology, physiology of your body. It is impossible for you to lose all that belly fat that you're trying to lose if you are on insulin. But don't lose hope. You should be questioning yourself and your doctors, when are you gonna get me off the insulin? Because it's possible. It only takes a type two diabetics, a type two diabetic case which is out of control, very poorly managed by the patient and by the medication for you to have to get onto insulin. Now, of course, your doctor, when you're put onto steroids or before a surgery, may give you insulin because if your insulin levels, okay, or your blood sugar levels are out of whack, it can hamper your surgery. It can delay recovery, it can delay healing, and it can cause harm to you. So yes, there are several times that you may have to take insulin for, for, for selective incidents. For every type 2 diabetic who's roaming out there, taking insulin, not changing their lifestyles, please understand, even though your blood sugar levels are showing better on your lab reports, you are still sick. And I don't say this in a derogatory manner or in a demotivating manner. I say this with the hope that you will empower yourself to get off that insulin and make the lifestyle changes. So number one, you don't have diabetes. And number two, you prevent the possible onset of Alzheimer's, type three diabetes, cardiovascular strokes, and everything else, including CKD, chronic kidney disease. So now what controls insulin? There is no drug on this planet that can drop your insulin levels. The only thing that you can do is through your diet and through fasting. 
So that's just one example for you to relate on today, because I think people have to be tired now of being treated at a symptomatic level only. You must be treated at a, symp uh, 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 as a symptomatic level, but you must also change your lifestyle. All the diabetics who have been on symptomatic treatment, are you getting better or are you getting worse as you age? You're getting worse. You have new problems that you didn't have three years ago or four years ago because you only treated the symptom. You didn't address the root cause. You now have a metabolic syndrome. You now have metabolic disease. My whole point is this is one example. We can tie, we can tie every single example with poor lifestyle today. But today, it's time for you to reflect. The human body, okay, is not designed to eat all the time. It is not designed. And for a diabetic, if you're going into hypo, you gotta eat at that time. But just because you have a fear of hypo, you can't keep eating all the time. You're never gonna get better. And your doctors are gonna give you more and more insulin and you're gonna get sicker and sicker. The point to understand is at some point, you gotta control your diet. You gotta control your fasting periods between your meals. And yes, it's individual for you. You have to do it at an individual level. All the diabetics reaching out there will be wanting to ask, oh, so Luke, how many, ga gaps, uh, uh, how many hours of gap should I keep? How many hours should I fast? I don't know. And you shouldn't be asking advice like that because you're unique. Your blood sugar levels will vary with different times in the day, when you're stressed, when you're not stressed, depending on how much you slept at night, depending on what medication you've been, been on, depending on your genetics, depending on so much. So you cannot get your answer this way. You gotta individualize it. Anyway, coming back to fasting, okay? I'm giving you reflection points today and I can guarantee you when you learn the art of fasting for you, not the American way, not the Indian way, not the Russian way, not the London way, not the Japanese way, but the you way, because fasting will vary according to every individual. No one can put you in a box. But there is one principle of fasting that nature has taught us and which you cannot argue with, you cannot debate. You can only find fault with it because you can't do it. And most human beings, when they can't do something, they like to find fault. They like to use fault to justify how they feel and console themselves. The only fast that can really, really work based on science is the circadian fast, where you stop to eat at sunset and you start to eat only after sunrise. And here's the science, very simple, beautiful science. Already you're thinking, but I can't do it, I work. I know you have all the problems in the world and they may be genuine. Where there's a will, there's a way. You don't only have to use circadian rhythm of fasting as your tool to get better. There are so many people who reverse their type two diabetes with fasting in specific intervals if they cannot do sunset to sunrise. But here's the science. Once the sun sets, we start to produce melatonin a hormone that communicates with the pancreas to start slowing down the secretion of digestive enzymes, which means, in short, it's slowing down digestion. As the sun sets, we're supposed to close the digestive system, shut it down. The digestive system gets a break. A lot of energy that goes into digestion can now be used for all the night functions, repair, rejuvenation, growth, boosting of the training of the immune system, lowering of inflammation and all of that. You can relate to this. How many of you have a late night meal and wake up feeling acidic and blood sugar levels are all over the place, you couldn't even sleep well at night? Clearly shows you that your, your body struggled to break down a late night meal because you're eating at a time that you're not meant to eat. Do you see day animals eat at night? Do you see nocturnal birds and nocturnal animals, which are night animals and night birds, eat a day? No, we follow a system of nature. And whether you're a CEO, a billionaire, a person with a normal job, a doctor, an astronaut, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you are, who you are, how special you think you are. Unfortunately, the law of nature treats everyone equally. You fall within the biorhythms of nature, the intelligence within you works for you. You fall out of the biorhythms of nature, it's called unnatural. You're out of homeostasis. Your body does not work for you. That is the first principle I want you to reflect on. Yes, you'll have tons of excuses. How will I party? How will I socialize? That's your problem. That's your problem. 
Where there's a will, there's a way. Okay? Coming back to the second point that I want you to reflect on before we use the next couple of days to go into the depth of fasting. Okay? The human body over years have been trained that it cannot get food at regular intervals. Today we can. We can. Modernization, industrialization, availability of food, Amazon, Swiggy, Zomatos. We can have food at the click of a button. Okay? That's good for us from a comfort level. Extremely bad for us because it allows us to eat when we want, at what time we want. Disrupting the entire biorhythm of the human body. I can guarantee you today, if there's anyone out there who wants to put money into research, because a lot of money that goes into research today is for a controlled outcome. You put money into a research of a product because you want that research to sell a product, a medicine, a drug, okay? There are billionaires out there who are willing to put in research you take people and you put them into the natural rhythm of nature with simple fasting, simple food, a beautiful social life, and most of their medical conditions will start to get better. I can guarantee you this. I can guarantee you this. The money for this investment won't be huge, but what's more scary are the results that will come that will shatter the thinking of most human beings and bring them back to simplicity, away from complication, and massive industries will start to lose money. So maybe it can never happen, maybe it can. We don't know, but are we gonna wait for that? Are we gonna be smart enough to start right now? We don't have to wait for that research. We don't have to wait for that intelligence smarter than nature. The day we stop thinking we are smarter than social media and that we should take all the information on social media as God's word and live our lives according to it. In fact, all the, all the information on social media have actually made people sicker, fatter, more depressed, more emotional, and more unhappy. That's what social media is for you. That's what the media is for you. That's what the press is there for you. The press today tells you cholesterol is bad for you. In a few days, the press will tell you cholesterol is good for you. When is it gonna end? When you start to take responsibility for your own health? Through simple understanding, and you start to do the things that will rejuvenate your entire mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, and intellectual sphere of your human body. And it starts off with simple fasting. There is magic that happens in the body when you stop eating. Of course, if you're a kidney patient, you're a sick patient, please don't try to twist my words. I am talking to people who have the ability to do it. There are patients who should not be doing it. And maybe as you get better, you can do it, okay? So rise above shallow thinking. Rise above the want to mix and twist and mince people's words and use a little bit of common sense, keeping your ego and your pride low. Today, all you need to do is reflect. Am I eating too much and all the time? Let me start eating for me, what I need to do, okay? Every time you feed yourself with sugar, I don't have a problem with sugar. I have a problem with people who finish sugar and then again they need more sugar and they need more sugar. You're just creating more and more insulin. I don't have a problem with carbohydrates. All my patients have a beautiful diet with carbohydrates in. they never feel deprived. I'm against you being a carbohydrate junkie. I'm against you being a sugar junkie. Why do I use the word junkie? They say, oh, Luke, junkies only used for heroin addicts and cocaine addicts. No, it's used for anything that creates the reward system in your brain, which is your dopamine reward center to produce more and more dopamine. So if I have sugar right now, it makes me feel so good. It doesn't matter whether a Michelin star chef baked that cake for you or it was a normal village local bakery. Okay, it doesn't matter. That sugar will cause your dopamine levels to rise. That's the reward center of the brain. And now you want that reward over and over again. That's, that's the unfortunate part of most human beings. We're greedy. We want to feel good all the time because a lot in our life is bad. We have voids. We have sadness, which we don't want to face. So we want to feel good all the time. We want to use coping mechanisms. So we use sugar and carbohydrates to reward the reward center of the brain, producing more dopamine. And then the problem is when you become a junkie, okay? You're trying to feel better so you have more carbs. You're trying to feel better so you have more sugar. And that's when you have all the problems with the key hormone called insulin. How do you break that? Fasting. By fasting.
by self-restraint, not starvation. You retrain the way your cells work in the human body. You retrain the communication between your neurotransmitters and the reward centers in your brain, your taste, your smell, what you see. What you see. It's as simple as that. You retrain it with fasting. Most people I know, sometimes when I get on a sugar binge, it happens to me. It happens to me many, many times in a year. The only way I'm having sugar the first day and the second and the third day and then the fourth day, I'm saying, come on, I'm just going to go all out because tomorrow is the day I'm going to stop sugar. No, the only thing that breaks it is when I get back into fasting and I start fasting 30, 40, maybe 70, maybe 18 hours after three days, all those sugar cravings are gone. I can't stand the sight of sugar anymore. So you see the human body, it only craves sugar and bad carbs when it's unhealthy and you keep feeding it. How does alcoholism work? How does rehab work? You take an alcoholic, you counsel them, you put them in a room, you don't give them alcohol, and after a while the body stops craving it. It's the same thing with carbohydrates and it's the same thing with sugar. And fasting does that for you in a gentle manner. So today, I want you to reflect on this. The last point I want you to reflect on is when you see a sick dog or an animal, okay, go on to YouTube, Look at sick tigers, look at sick zoo animals, look at sick dogs. Walk around your village or wherever you live and look at a sick dog. Will you see them eating? Now forget about dogs because a lot of you must say, but I'm not a dog. Okay, fine, you're not a dog. What about human beings? The first thing that happens when you fall sick or watch your child, they will stop eating. The appetite will cut automatically. Some really bad parents force feed their children through sickness. And I can tell you that you are doing that child extreme harm. Your own insecurities, you're projecting on your child by overfeeding them and by overfeeding yourself if you're an adult. The next time you fall sick, mindfully see if you're hungry or not. And you will not be hungry, but yet you feel sorry for yourself. And those are the days you start to order pizzas and burgers because you feel sorry for yourself. Compromising the inner doctor, the inner physician, which is fasting. There's a reason why your body cuts down your appetite to save you energy, to reduce digestive stress on the human body, to increase your immune function, to increase growth hormones that repair you, that protect you, that act as natural steroids, natural steroids in the human body. But here you go shutting off that system because you're constantly eating. Now, there are some patients who need to eat. Of course, they need to eat. They're losing weight drastically. Certain cancer patients, certain patients, they will be given a diet to eat to maintain body weight. I am not talking to y'all. There's a, there's a space for you to fast done in a supervised way. You can do it, supervised. I'm talking to everyone else. And these are the points I want you to reflect on before you go and put yourself into a box of intermittent fasting, alternate day fasting, cyclic fasting, no carb fasting, and all that crap. You don't need that crap. For the longest time, 10,000s of years, human beings have fasted to heal diseases. Human beings have fasted and have had more energy than people who are eating snacks all the time. I have people come and say, look, I have no energy to work out. I eat six times a day. I say, stop eating six times a day. Eat six, two times a day and come back to me. And they say, hey, look, guess what? I could do a one hour run today. You're eating too much and you're making your kids eat too much. And that's why we have juvenile diabetes, juvenile obesity, juvenile cancers, juvenile everything today. Because we've taken our bad habits and we've taken it and projected it on our generation of people today. So these are the points I want you to reflect on, simple points. And then I will handhold you through every step of fasting. Because you can quote me right now, fasting is the most therapeutic medicine. It's always existed. Today, it's being pushed, pushed in the corner because it's getting people off medication. I don't have a problem with medication. Take your medication. But while you're taking that medication, if you're making lifestyle changes and that lifestyle change includes maybe eight hours of fasting, 10 hours, 12 hours, and guess what? You're getting better and your doctor gets you off medication. That's what we want. That's all we want for people to get better and feel better, not to be chronically sick not to be on chronic medication. Everyone talks about, oh, medicine is allowing people to live longer. But have you looked at the quality of life of people living longer? Most of them are on 10 drugs. Most of them are on painkillers. Most of them are on steroids. Most of them have Alzheimer's and dementia and Parkinson's. They're living longer, but what's the quality of life? 
Don't be fooled by these things. Do not be fooled by these things. Yes, we can live longer because you're in something called chronic illness, where every medication is only suppressing your symptoms and keeping you, giving you a little more life and a little more life. We want that, but we also want quality. And it's up to us to build that quality in life with the decisions that we make today when it comes to the food that we eat, the quality of our sleep, the way we move and exercise, emotional wellness, and our ability to build in small fasts into our life.